over the impact of the trade dispute between the U.S. and not only China, but all its big trading partners. And South Africa has already felt the impact directly. Now, exporters have been affected by higher import duties, you'll remember, on steel and aluminium entering the United States. The United States government is now mulling possible duties on car and vehicle component parts. Now, this could affect South Africa's efforts to attract the world's top car makers, which are already manufacturing here in South Africa and benefiting some of them from our preferential access to U.S. markets under the American law called AGOA. To discuss, we're joined by the Deputy Director General of Trade and Industry, Lelwa Mlumbi. She's live for us in our studio in Pretoria. Thank you for being with us. Uh, the, the Trade and Industry Minister has raised his concerns. L let's start with how serious this could be for South Africa, the possible tariffs on car parts. Well, in terms of uh, 2017, we exported uh, close to 15.8 billion worth of uh, both autos as well as auto components. And 93% of that was um, passenger vehicles and 4% was mainly auto components. Um, so if you look at that, it's a significant part of our exports. However, uh, one of our auto uh, manufacturers is no longer going to export uh, to the U.S. market. Uh, because it has changed uh, the production line to another uh, type of a model that will be destined mainly for the African continent, the EU, and the rest mm. of the world. So if you look at uh, 2018 going forward, we are expected to have a significant reduction uh, in our passenger vehicles that are going to the U.S. market. Like you say, this, this is... Uh an economic contributor in, in South Africa. I spoke to the head of Volkswagen and they said they won't be impacted. I don't know if you're talking about them, but not many cars going to America. Uh, but what, what are the other impacts for other manufacturers? Are we talking about job losses here? Will this affect our growth? If we look at auto components, uh, which is likely to be significantly impacted uh, by this, um, we are likely to see uh, job losses uh, because um, the auto manufacturers of components will have to pay a duty should the U.S. government decide to impose the Section 232 duties. So um, for now, the investigation is still ongoing. We don't know how big the, how big the impact will be because the U.S. has not yet indicated what will be the percentage of those duties. So we'll await uh, the investigation. When the minister met with his uh, counterparts in the U.S., uh, Secretary Ross for Commerce, he indicated that they expect to finalize the investigation by August. So we will have to wait to see until then uh, what will be the impact uh, with regards mm -hmm. to our auto components. And what is South Africa really doing about this? Uh, your department saying that the Minister Rob Davies spoke to these American officials. How persuasive are we being right now? Well, firstly, I think the important factor to note is that the U.S. Uh, is undertaking the Section 232 investigations on the basis of their national security imperatives. Um, so what we can do as South Africa is to make submissions into the process. And on Thursday, um, our ambassador to the U.S., Ambassador Mnino Mahlangu, will be making a presentation uh, through uh, the process that is already um, outlined by the U.S. government. So what we would expect is that the U.S. government would look at all of those submissions. And we've already made our submissions when we spoke to um, Secretary Ross, as well as Ambassador Lighthizer, the U.S. trade representative, about the significant impact that this will have uh, on South African exports. Because if you look at auto components and autos, in 2016 they accounted for 80% of our exports under Goa. Of course, as I said, because we are going to reduce our exports of um, vehicles uh, into the U.S., given that one manufacturer has now decided to change the model, we are likely to see a significant reduction in our exports of vehicles to the U.S., but ultimately, this will have an impact, and we are concerned. And we have raised concerns not only bilaterally in South Africa with the U.S., but also 
uh, through the Africa group of trade ministers that are beneficiaries under Goa, where there was a coordinated message about the impact of the Section 232 uh, duties in terms of eroding the Agoa benefits uh, to sub-Saharan African countries. Well, if I heard you correctly, so 80% of our exports under Agoa are linked to cars. So, so we're talking about Agoa, all the benefits that we've had in the past basically being wiped out. That is the main concern, uh, that um, if you look at uh, autos, they account for a significant portion of our exports under Agoa. So it's a key concern uh, for us. And um, there are not a number of countries that are able to export diversified products into the U.S. market. And one of the key objectives of AGOA was to assist African countries to diversify their, their market base and also exports into the U.S. market. So the concern was raised uh, by the African trade ministers that if you look at the products that are affected by the Section 232, it's value-added exports then um, the impact of this is likely to be that um, African countries that are benefiting under Goa will mainly uh, be exporters of primary products and this will not contribute to the broader development objectives of the region in terms of diversification and industrialization. Ms. Mlumbi, if we look back, uh, we've been through rough negotiations when AGOA was uh, threatened in the past over the chicken uh, exports to the U.S. And, and poultry coming into South Africa. There was a long period of uncertainty. I don't think uh, South Africa seemed to come out on, on top or to persuade those American officials. Now, with Donald Trump at the top, is there any chance of success here? I think there is, uh, because there is recognition uh, from the U.S. stakeholders that we've engaged with, both from the government as well as the private sector, that the African continent, um, of which South Africa is part, uh, is a significant uh, growth opportunity, uh, not only for the U.S., but also globally. And a number of African trade partners are cooperating with the African continent and this also gives the opportunity for the U.S. government uh, to look at how it can strengthen its economic ties uh, with one of the growing regions um, in the world. Um, and what we have emphasized and the minister has emphasized in the discussions was that uh, sometimes there is a focus on only um, the uh, trade arrangement as the basis for growing or strengthening economic ties be between um, uh, the U.S. as well as sub-Saharan Africa. While there are other avenues that can be explored, uh, such as business-to-business -business cooperation when it comes to infrastructure development, given the huge infrastructure deficit that exists in the continent, as well as the development integration agenda that the con continent is pursuing. And in this regard, uh, the opportunities for cooperation when it comes to industrial development as well as infrastructure development. And I think there was recognition that there is an opportunity for us uh, to also explore those avenues so that we can see an increase in U.S. investments on industrial development as well as infrastructure development. All right. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Deputy Director General of Trade and Industry, Lelwa Mlumbi Peter. So South Africa is asking, uh, it's another thing if America, the United States is listening and we're being affected by that trade war. I can tell you that uh, the RAND was doing wonderfully well today uh, based on the lull in concerns about the trade war and the EU talking to China. So maybe uh, other nations blocks starting to work around the United States. However, our stocks in the doldrums, uh, Bongani was talking about the economic growth data out of China not looking as hot as it could be and that's weighing on our miners the JSC down significantly let's take a look
Vadima has always been one man who is brave. 